Hey everyone, I'm Rod and Todd, a professional YouTuber who makes professional videos. It's Tuesday, which means it's time for another Transformers review. So, here we go. This is WFC S14 Shockwave. He was released in the leader size class as part of Wave 1 of the War for Cybertron Siege toy line. And my neighbor's dogs are going completely crazy, so if you hear any dogs barking in the background, that's my neighbor's dogs. Uh, so, as always, we'll start with the alternate mode. Uh, Shockwave's alternate mode is a thing. I think this is supposed to be some big giant spaceship. And for what it is, it actually looks pretty cool. Got a lot of nice details. Probably my favorite is the these tiny little guns here on the top of the thing, and uh, these can't pivot or raise or lower or anything. And you can't attach the little effect pieces to the end, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, no. Uh, but it's still a nice little detail. They totally didn't have to sculpt that, but they did. And the thing here at the front, which has some really nice sculpted detail. This is completely transparent. And, uh, yeah. We'll get to that later, though. At least in more detail. He has this command tower at the top, which is basically, it's like the Star Destroyers from Star Wars. They have this big command tower where the bridge is and stuff. And this little bridge employs a feature which has been missing from Transformers toys for years and has made its glorious return as a part of Siege. It's called light piping. It's basically to where there's a clear piece of plastic to where when you shine light through it, it makes it look like something's glowing. In the event of this guy here, there's a small piece of clear plastic on the top of here, and then there's a this, the piece of plastic it's also showing on the front. You kind of see that little yellow dot right there. That's where the light's going to come out of. So I had this flashlight here. I'm going to attempt to make this work. So here you go. Okay, so let's see. Like you can kind of see it lighting up there. So if I were to take the light away from it. But then, yeah, so there you go. It's lighting up. You can see it in the center of that little circle. Yeah, that's it. It's probably about the best I can get it to light up on camera. So, there you go. There's also another light piping piece in this figure that we'll get to later. In terms of cannons, or weapons, really, it has these two smaller, kind of like lavender-ish weapons. One there, and one there. These things cannot accommodate blast effect parts, unfortunately. But these bigger ones here on the sides, they totally can't. So, uh, I brought out the ones that come with Rung. He's a figure we haven't reviewed yet, but we'll get to him in time. And you just attach them there, like so. And there you go. And then the other two, I have... I got the one from Caliburst. That's another figure I haven't reviewed yet. It should just... There you go. And then... I got the one from Blowpipe. Of course, I've already reviewed him. And that just should attach him there. And there you go. There's Shockwave with his guns ablazing. There's another... Uh, accessory... Or not accessory. There's another attachment points. On the front here, I believe what this is supposed to be is like this spaceship's big central weapon. Is this massive thing on the front. And there is an attachment point for the blast effect parts. However, if you take the ones that come with the battle masters, it looks kind of small come out of this big thing. So I got a bigger blast effect. No, not the ones that come with Omega Supreme. I don't have that one. Uh, this piece here, this comes with the Studio Series 86 Scourge figure. Again, that's a, a figure I have yet to review. That one's, I'm not going to review that one for a long while. But, you just attach it in there. 
Hopefully, I think I should be able to just... There we go. It's a tight fit. There you go. Looks like it's firing something out of there. Don't really know what it would be, but... There you go. So anyway, we can move the effect pieces now. And in the back here, you can see there's these big thrusters here. And then I guess these are supposed to also be thrusters, I think. And as a lot of jets in Siege, you can actually attach the effect pieces in the back to make it look like it's taking off or something. So, again, just a nice little feature. Uh, yeah, that's really all I have to say about this form. And that isn't the only alternate mode Shockwave has. See, as with every figure that's a leader-sized figure in this line, um, Shockwave has this thing to where he's a smaller Voyager-class-sized robot, but then comes with a bunch of accessories to make you pay 20 extra dollars for it. In the event of Shockwave, he has all these pieces that combine with his robot and vehicle modes to form something bigger. This is the something bigger form, and we're going to remove those pieces and get to just the base form. So, take this off, get this off, and then this piece here, just can get to, it's there, just comes out from the side, and just, it's all the way around, comes off, and you're left with this. So, this is basically a smaller version of the spaceship mode, sort of. So, this is actually what it's meant to be, is Shockwave's original space blaster mode. Because the original Shockwave turned into a laser gun, and of course they can't make a Transformer turn into a gun now, can they? At least not in this day and age. However, Hasbro was able to get around this by taking the six-shot approach. Basically, having it turn into an exact replica of the original gun mode, but the instructions tell you to turn it upside down and they pretend it's something else. So, in order to, to turn this into gun mode, all you gotta do is fold down these little fins, and there you go. So, gun mode. The bridge is basically just the handle, and it's pretty small, it doesn't really fit comfortably in my hand, but if you have a smaller hand, it would work. And you just... Hold it like that, and pew, 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 pew. See, people have been able to make, like, a fan-made gun modes for Siege Megatron, but this is official, more or less. Basically, like, they don't tell you you can do this, but they're pretty much openly inviting you to do this. It's even got the little connector hose that the original figure had. There's one complaint I do have about this gun mode, is that for one, due to weirdness. This part doesn't sit completely straight, but the rest of it, you can see it's slightly at a different angle. And there's also no attachment piece for effect parts here on the end of the gun. That's not the best, but overall, I'm just glad we have a modern shockwave figure with the original gun mode. And that's really all I have to say. So, that's shockwave in both his alternate modes. So, now we're moving on to the packaging. So, here's the box. This thing is gigantic. Gigantic! You can see it was my hand. This thing is titanic. So, let's take a closer look. You got the uh, Siege logo down here. Transformers logo there. Uh, and by the way, this is actually too tall for me to turn in my little studio here. So... There. It says Decepticon Shockwave, WFC-14, with a little rank insignia there. You can't really see it because of all the reflections, but there is a bigger version of that rank insignia on the inside of the packaging. Turn it around here. It's got the Siege Mural, except it's big. Let me see if I can pull the camera back a bit. There you go. So, I'm not going to go over this in any detail. You can pause the video and look at it. It's just the same mural that's on the side of every Siege box. Nothing too special. On the back here, I can move the camera forward again. On the back here, 
You can see there's a picture of his robot mode combined with all his accessories, which transforms from that to that in 28 steps. And here's the base robot mode with all the accessories formed into this little hoverboard thing, which, spoiler alert, is not very good. And then, instead of having it be a cross cell with him holding a battle master, instead says select opponent with a picture of Ultra Magnus. I don't have Siege Ultra Magnus. I do, however, have the Netflix exclusive, or not the, not Netflix, because the uh, Walmart exclusive Netflix figure, but I won't be putting them side by side. You'll just have to wait and see that Magnus figure until I review it. And then on the side, you got the box art. Now, let's move this back again. As you can see, it's his leader class down there. It's got a picture of Shockwave. I guess he's like standing in his lab because he's a scientist. He has a glowing eye. See, he's got his like hand raised or something. Got some electrical sparks in the background. Got like, a computer. And down here is a severed arm. That's cool. So anyway, there's the box. It's titanic. It's colossal. It's really cool. And that's really all I have to say about the packaging, so let's just move on to the robot mode, shall we? So here is Shockwave in his robot mode. This is his base robot mode without all the accessories added on. And, yeah, so, basically, this figure, when it's in its little base form, it stands the exact same height as a Battlemaster. Or not, not, why did I say Battlemaster? It stands the exact same height as a Voyager class figure. So you can have this guy be the same size as Megatron or Starscream and all the other big Decepticons. And excuse me, my parents are kind of being jerks right now and yelling at the top of their lungs. So if you hear any weird background banter, that's my parents. Because they don't understand, you need to keep quiet when someone is recording. So, uh, yeah, let's just move on to the articulation. So, Shockwave has pretty standard articulation for a Siege figure. It's got a ball joint at the head, so it can move left and right. And up and down a bit. Again, you can't really see it too well, but there you go. He has a universal joint at the arm. This is just the transformation. It's not supposed to swing that way. So, uh, universal joint at the arm. And I uh, can also it's like a move out and also move all the way around. Bend at the elbow, swivel at the elbow, wrist swivel, and gun swivel. In fact, the gun does pivot for no reason. And then waist swivel. Universal joint at the leg to move out forward and back, and as you can hear, that's on a ratchet, that's real tight, swivel at the thigh, bend at the thigh, which by the way, this is supposed to be in a ratchet, but I think my shockwave is assembled wrong, his left knee has that ratchet, but the right knee doesn't, so I don't know if that's a factory error or something, if your shockwave has the same problem, let me know, and then he has the little angle articulation which allows you to splay his legs out and still have them stand flat. So, pretty standard stuff on the articulation. In terms of accessories, he does have uh, five accessories, those being all the parts that merge with him to form his, you know, his uh, giant spaceship mode. And in this form, uh, the accessories aren't really used. So they combine, I hit the camera, and combine into this thing, and we'll get to that here in a bit. So he does actually have one weapon in robot mode, the gun. And the instructions actually give a name to it. It's the LV-1 Thermal Range Neuron Beam. It's a gun on his hand. Which makes you wonder how he gets stuff done with only one hand. Anyway, this one is compatible with the little effect pieces. So you can have him shoot. And yes, he does have this rubber connector hose that runs from his arm to his backpack. Which is cool. I like that. They don't really make Shockwave figures anymore with this hose. So it's always great when he does come with one. 
and this hose is not removable. You can disconnect it from the arm, however it is permanently attached to the backpack. It's also made of rubber so it's pretty flexible. And no, they also made it to where it's impossible to just take it out and like store it on his back or something because this peg is I guess slightly bigger than the all the other holes in his body so they'll only connect to this one on the bottom of his arm. Smooth Hasbro, smooth. Anyway, let's remove this and let's take a look at this. It's kind of like a little hovercraft, hoverboard thing he rides on. And this was actually one of the main reasons I bought this figure. I really liked the thought of him just riding in the battle on top of this thing. But it's not really the best. For one, these pieces here are attached very loosely. You can just swivel them down. I don't know if that's intentional or not. I mean, it kind of looks like you can have the guns aimed and whatnot, but... See, it connects here, there's a 5mm peg, and there's also this little rectangular tab. If they have just added a little rectangular hole on the side of that, this problem could be avoided completely. And they also fall off pretty easily. It's not very fun. Of course, you can still attach blast effect pieces right there. Let's get the one from Scourge again. And there's two pegs on the top, which you're supposed to be able to put Shockwave's feet on, however you can only fit one because the figure's too wide. Of course, he has those feet holes that every Siege figure has, so you should just be able to... There goes the blast effect part. So, give me a second, let me just... I'm gonna have to take this off camera for a second. So there you go. There's Shockwave on his little thing, and this piece fell off. See, I do not like this thing just because these fall off so easily. So, if it's obvious, I don't display my Shockwave on this thing. I honestly feel like this wasn't intentional for them to combine like this. Someone just saw, hey, I can uh, put something together and whatnot. It really just exists to give the accessories something to do when they're not combined with Shockwave. And I don't display my Shockwave like that. Uh, I just display them combined with all those parts. So we're going to actually demonstrate that. I'm not just going to cut away and whatnot. So he has the five main parts here. He's got these two. These are basically identical except for the fact there's a left and a right. These are called the LV Gamma Disruptor Launcher by the instructions. And in order to attach these to Shockwave, you just fold that piece down, or it just kind of loosely tabs in, they just pull it down. And then there's the post and the corresponding peg, there's arms. It's just there, just there, and there. Then he has these two pieces. And as with the shoulders here, this, these are pretty much identical apart from the left and the right, and the instructions call these the LV Duo Pulse Therm or, uh, Radiograph. I feel like that's... I don't know. So, the instructions tell you to use these as basically shoes. However, the Japanese pictures of the figure on the Japanese website also say you can use them as leg guns. This is the first time I've ever attempted to do that. This doesn't even stay in. So, don't use them as leg guns. Just use them as feet. So, of course, it's got the corresponding peg with the little hole in his foot there. There's the ratchet. <laughs> and it just attaches. There you go. Now he's got these colossal things in his feet. And there's one last piece here. This giant thing. The instructions don't give it a name, so it's a thing. And this attaches, he just fits on top. Oh, I'm doing this the wrong way around. I don't know. It fits on top of his backpack, and then I always have to swing his arm forward because the hose gets in the way. Or rather, you can just, there's a peg here and a hole in the side of the backpack. And it just connects on the side, folds down, folds down again, and it is secure. And he has this thing. 
basically just gives him a bigger backpack. So this is Shockwave in his, uh, in his uh, armored form. It gives him four arms. Three gun arms and one regular arm. Again, I have no idea how he gets stuff done if he, if, if he can only hold things with his right hand. And, given how these are the same little guns from the spaceship mode, you can't attach effect pieces on those. And of course you can still put them in his shoes if you want to give him gun boots. But that's just stupid. It's in this form. He does have a few attachment points for effect pieces though that aren't on his guns. Of course I have the little explosion piece here. So you just use one on either of his shoulders so you can just make it look like he's getting hit or something. And then there's also one on either leg. If I can get him to stand. I don't remember it being so hard to stand up my shockwave. So there you go. And then there's one on the other leg. There you go. And of course, I should mention the extra arms are articulated the same as the regular arms. You can swivel them and move them forward a bit. I don't know why these exist, but it's cool. Just cool that Shockwave felt that I... Ah, shoot. See, that's why I... That's why I don't like this one being the factory error of the missing ratchet. He cannot stand. Oh yes, and of course he does have the light piping. I should have mentioned that in the base form. He does have that light piping. It's in his eye. Of course, he has the big singular yellow eye. Now it'll just be another white circle, so let me see if I can get this to work. Yeah, you can see it glowing there. It's lighting up a little circle. So, I think it's really cool that his eye lights up like that, but it's it's not really needed, but it's amazing. So anyway, I can't really say I have much else to say about this figure. Uh, I do like the uh, combined vehicle mode with all this stuff. Uh, it looks cool. And then, without all the stuff on his vehicle mode, it's a great gun mode, but there's just there's a few flaws. And then... And then his base robot mode is actually pretty cool. The combined robot mode, it's really extra, but... It's still cool. And then his stupid little spacecraft hoverboard thing is... Horrible. Horrible. So, uh, that's my review of the... Uh, War for Cybertron Seed Shockwave figure. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe and turn on notifications and all that good stuff. And uh, tune in next week as we actually don't start on Wave 2. We cover our first exclusive figure. Just take a look at the Amazon exclusive Greenlight.